Ladies and gentlemen, we are back. Ooh, I just got back. I'm coming in hot. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob in the building. What's up, everybody? Man, you're so far, man. I can't, Let's I can't just shake your hand high and five, shit. High five. That's yeah, what man. happens when you're blowing up, man. The RPT, the Thea, the Patreon, everything. The podcast is blowing up. That's why we get more space. You put more space between each other when you get more... It's like, bigger. that's what happens, bro. Success, you know what I'm saying? Success. Sometimes big houses, you know, just more it's space. More money, people. more problems. More, more not more just problems. Problem. This is RPT season number seven, episode 82. It is Wednesday, August 18th. What? Hold on. This ain't right. I say 18th? That you, you, we got to update the little text. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one's going to come out tomorrow, the 25th. August 25th. The episode's right, though. 2021, the year of our Lord, 2021. Uh, I knew that was off because my birthday... Just I know. Pass, you know what I'm saying? The 23rd. Shout out to all the Virgos. Virgo season. Feliz cumpleaños. We in here. We in here. I think tonight we're going to go to Luisa's again. And um, it's, it's tiring. I heard it's the last one. It's ti- I'm, t- I'm tired, bro. Move I'm it. Tired. Can you move the bottom of your of your love? Your, no, no, the whole, the, oh, the whole thing. Yeah, move the fucking. I put it. I, I moved it yesterday when Sol and I were recording. Yeah, yeah this is a multi. Chinga la madre, hombre. They're, they're like, just start this episode over. Uh, a lot happening, man. A lot happening. Shout out to Shell Shock CBD. Um, I got to restock, y'all. I got to restock. That's how I remember to shout y'all out because I'll be forgetting. <laughs> uh, ShellShockCBD.com. Promo code Chingo gets you 10% off. Get your CBD. Get you some Delta 8. If you got puppies, man, they make CBD for the dogs, bro, for the canines. You they heard? do. Delta 8 for the canines. You heard me? Yeah. Uh, Freedom of Speech Tour. I am back on the road. I'm very excited to work on this material. We got a lot to talk about. I'm headed to Denver, Colorado, August 27th through the 29th. Bring souvenirs. Bring souvenirs. Bring souvenirs. El Paso, Texas, September 9th through the 11th. Brea, California, September 15th. Oxnard, Califa, September 16th. Orale. Addison, Texas, October 7th through the 10th. Sas. San Antonio, October 14th through the 16th. Irvine. Beautiful Irvine. Beautiful. Beautiful. Save California, make it great again. November 3rd, Houston, Texas, November 5th through the 7th. And that's it. That's all I got for now. But a lot of other projects, so uh, we shall see. Hell yeah, man. Uh, let's, let's ease into it. Let's ease into it. Your birthday just passed. Yeah. You're officially 42. Oof. I know the baby's not letting you guys sleep them as much Oof. as you'd like to. You 40, don't have any shell shock. 42 with a newborn, bro. Yeah, you didn't expect that to, to happen, huh? Yeah, that's when you, you know, when you alpha, like me, bro, you know, you just got more energy anyway. Puro pinche alpha. Because you know how to manage that energy, bro. You got to learn. Puro vato alpha, for real. But yeah, we're going to talk about that on Chingo Chats. Um, this is RPT. Um, the sky is falling, ladies and gentlemen. America is in managed decline. Yeah. The elites have sold us out. Mm-hmm. They trying to muzzle your kids up again. Uh, you don't know whose side these school districts are on. It's like, okay, are y'all, who are y'all sticking up for? Propaganda? Some of the commentary I'm hearing uh, from the independent types are saying that like, it, it finally seems like mainstream media is kind of pushing back a little bit on Biden. Do you see that? Are you catching any of that? Um, yeah, the only little things I recall watching leftist you know, mainstream media is um, they'll be like, well, the Afghanistan was a catastrophe. Like, They don't know how many Americans are there, and they're just like, well, what happened? And you know, it's just, yeah. you know. With so many people that, I mean, I guess there's still a lot of people that watch, right? A lot of people still watch mainstream media. Oh, yeah. There's still a good amount. So it it might, it's kind of, it's like twofold, right? It's scary because as soon as mainstream media kind of says something like that, then the rest of the, the sheeple, right? The hurdle, whatever you want to call them, the herd, will be like, oh, I guess then we should also be against Biden a little well, bit. Huh? Well, a lot of polls, um, I think Rasmussen, a new poll by Rasmussen, Biden is not doing well in the polls, man. No. He's like... Uh, low approval ratings. They call it Biden buyer's remorse. Basically, bro, people are, are like, hey, we might all agree that we should have never been there. We, we probably should have been gone. They agree with him on that. But the way he pulled out, pull out game was weak. <laughs> pull out game was so flawed that, you know, the, the common, even the normies, they just kind of like, uh, yeah, that don't... This, how, how do y'all have 15,000 hostages right now? Yeah. How are we on there? On, how are we on the T-bands timeline? Like, we have no leverage. You know, we talked about this on the last episode. Like, I mean, a five-year-old, Trump said in his speech, he's like, bro, a five-year-old could have known. Don't pull the troops out first and then leave the fucking weaponry 
the whole you just armed this entire army you just brought them up to speed yeah i saw a meme <laughs> just before walking in it was uh the taliban a month ago and it was a goat with two guns like strapped to them with cloth and then taliban today and it's like they have our humvees and they have our turrets and helicopters yeah. all types of shit I don't know. It's 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 it just looks very treasonous. It looks like a dereliction of duty. People talking about impeaching homeboy over this. You know, speaking of polls though, in that same in that same conversation that I remember hearing commentary of yesterday, from the from the I guess according to the fall whatever the day the fall of Kabul uh, 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 what was it Kabul Kabul so I won't say Kabul because we know you know Kabuls oh, are yeah, in the news something else. yeah something else uh, th- he hasn't lost a single point on when it comes to Democrats. Like, he hasn't lost a favor a favor point at all. Like, approval rating? Nothing. It depends on who did the poll. Uh, here, here's another stat, though. Um, I, don't, I, think, I don't know if it was um, ABC or Rasmussen. Somebody did a poll, and they asked Hispanic Americans, do you feel like Biden's economy right now is excellent, good, okay, needs improvement, terrible, blah, 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 blah. 0.0% of Latinos said it's excellent. Like, they, they, they don't even, like, we're not dumb. We're not stupid. Mm. You know. You know this economy ain't looking tip-top magoo. <laughs> every, every time you pump gas, everything, like, uh... Dude, there was a video of an old man. There was a TikTok that kind of went a little viral earlier this week where it was like, it's an old man pumping gas. He's like, uh, someone's recording him. He's like, $78 in a $100 Jeep. Ain't that some shit, basically. Wow. He's <laughs> like, I'm going to sell this motherfucker. No, but está cabrón. Um, that entire Afghanistan situation, man. Um, I still want to go watch that documentary just to see what a lot of the soldiers have to go through. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it, it, it's a very touchy subject, this whole thing, because, you know, if they impeach him, impeach him then Kamala going to be in there. And then they're going to have to try to impeach her. And I don't know if everybody's even down with that program, but they sure as hell didn't give a damn when Trump was in there. Yeah, dude. It's <laughs> Every weird. chance they could get. This motherfucker made a phone call to Ukraine. <laughs> you know, they, they hired her just based off some commentary, like purely off of her skin color, right? They're like, we're going to get some points because she's a woman. She's quote unquote black. Or- they say uh, Jeff Zucker from CNN like really, really liked her as yeah. well. Well, that's a whole other side of it, right? Yeah. I don't know how, you know. But either way, she wasn't popular. Yeah. If you want to talk about the spiciness that, you know, potentially happened behind, you know, behind the scenes, I don't know. But she's not popular. She wasn't popular at all leading, you know, not leading, but in the campaign trailer or whatever. And she's not popular now. No. She's less her, her, popular, if that's possible. Her approval ratings are like, nah, man, they done. It's a debacle on top of a debacle. Yeah. So if you want to play a little bit in that world of he actually gets impeached, she actually takes over. Then she gets impeached. <sighs> And then Hillary's mad because she became the first woman president and she was the most uh, disliked. So Hillary's like, I'm supposed to be the most disliked. <laughs> Ain't it funny how Hillary would always question the legitimacy of Trump's presidency? Like, he knows he's not legitimate. He knows he did not win. Yeah. And now, and now everybody's looking at Biden like, he know. Dude. You know, uh, I heard somebody say something interesting too yesterday where it's like, you know, we all joked about... This guy, there's no way that this guy's running shit, right? So who's pulling the strings? Like, who's calling the shots? And then as this Afghan thing has kind of unfolded, they're like, people are literally just sitting by and letting this guy make decisions then, if that's the case. They let him just say what's going to happen. They did it. No one advised him, not even the VP. Nobody said anything. They just let him execute the plan that he said he wanted to execute. Nobody advised him? Against his plan, no. He, he said, this is what I want to do, and that's what he did. So, so they are, they're on the record. Like, that's... Like everybody, who the Pentagon, State Department. I mean, there was a video that came out a week or so ago. Whenever they started going down, where uh, if you remember uh, Kamala, would you say Kamala, Kamala or Kamala? Sepa la madre. Sepa la madre. Okay, la que mala. Calmala. La se necesita calmala. Sí. She said uh, probably I don't know early on in, uh, this year that she gets the last word, right? She gets the last say. So she's the last one, you know, that they ask something of, right? When things, decisions are being made. And I think it was also ABC or or CNN, one of them asked her, so were you the last person in the room when you were asked about how to, you know, execute on this this, uh, withdrawal or whatever? And she's like, yeah, I was. And you stand by like, yeah, I, I, I do. So everyone just said, okay. But again, this is coming from the commander in chief of the, of the strongest military ever. I mean, plus also there's like a, there's like a rule where you're not supposed to uh, go against the boss. 
You know what I'm saying? Like when it comes to White House type shit. Um, it's also a rule where you're not supposed to walk in front of the president. And there were pictures of her walking in front of Biden. Yeah. So there's no telling. Because, like, for example, some of um, high up military people were like, yeah, this is not how we would have. And it's like, bitch, you ain't y'all. Who's in charge? What's going on? Because so much of it is like, is it just a dereliction of duty and you just fucked up and didn't think like, man, maybe I should have pulled out the troops last. American citizens first, you know, America first and then so on and so forth. Bring all the goddamn weapons and shit. Don't leave them behind. And then blow some shit up right before you leave. You know, the bases, the infrastructure, the stuff that now we left all intact. They're over there sipping out of our water fountains, sleeping on our cots. <laughs> you know what I mean? Them lights that's installed up there, the AC units, the cafeteria. You didn't even blow up the cafeteria, bro. You couldn't even fuck up one restroom on these, these billion dollar, however much money they spent. So anyway, I say that to say this. Did was it just like oops, my bad? I, I should have brought American citizens out first and then so on. Or is it like, huh, that that's convenient how all of a sudden th- let me just get this is good this is a good ass point. <laughs> okay. This is a good ass point. All right. There's a book called Unrestricted Warfare by uh, some colonels out of China. Basically, one of their techniques is if I'm a country Let's just say I'm China. And I got beef with America. Now, I create these little alliances like, hey, man, let's make some money in Afghanistan. What's up, Taliban? Oh, what's up, China? Hey, man, you don't like America either. Hell no. That's Judeo-Christian West. That's, you know, that's the white man. That's Christianity. That's over there. That's them. There's heathens over there. We don't, that's not Sharia law. Okay, we don't like them either. What? China, you don't like them either? No, man, we fucking with them. How about? You keep them occupied for me. You know, maybe y'all can attack them by proxy. Basically, you can wear out your opponent by having them uh, tie up funds, attention, you know, everything from the news cycle. They're having to juggle COVID with the Afghanistan debacle. So it's like you can defeat your opponent by wearing their asses out. They're having to spend money now to, to combat this new resurgence of a new enemy. It's become a hotbed, they're saying, of like, oh, all the big leaders, like people that got $5 million bounties on their head, like big dog terrorists. Can I say that on YouTube? They're all moving back in. They're all leaving Pakistan. They're coming from throughout the region. It's like some Marvel Universe shit. You know what I mean? Some DC versus Marvel shit going on where it's a Petri dish of a crazy ideology and they ready to... September 11th coming up, y'all. You know, I keep saying that in my head, and I haven't said it out loud on a podcast, just because it's like, of course everyone's thinking that. Like, what is it, the 20th anniversary? No, no, ain't nobody, half the world ain't even thinking. Half America ain't even thinking. Well, half the people listening to this kind of commentary okay. is thinking about it, right? Because yeah, okay. it is the 20th anniversary, I think, this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And remember earlier this year, he was talking about pulling them out on September 11th for some reason, sort of yeah. not like... And they changed the timeline, right? Yeah. Basically, I think he wanted to have his hero moment. Like, y'all see, we were in this uh, pointless, endless war. Yeah. You know, multi-generations. We've been out there too long and I'm president and I'm going to bring him home. Well, the people that are giving him credit are the people that are saying that he's the only president that said, I'm going to bring the troops home and actually brought the troops home. And Biden's the one that's doubling down saying that this is the only way you could have fucking made the omelet. He goes, this is the this is what happens after. These are the spoils of a 20 year war. Right. This is what's going to. And he's not letting he's not letting go of that. Like he's standing by what he did and how he did it. And that that's just the repercussions of something that's lasted this long. And I'm the only president that actually brought them home. What's that dude's name on HBO? John Oliver? Yeah. <sighs> Man, bro. I was just sitting there watching this dude last night as we're trying to put the baby to sleep. <laughs> what, are you trying to not go to bed? Well, it's like, look, she's up. Like, she's up. She's, she's, she's trying to eat and do all kinds of shit. So we might as well watch this punk-ass John Oliver. So I'm sitting there watching it. And I'm like... Okay, bro, like who you work for? Like, because some of the stuff sounded straight off a of big pharma website, mm-hmm. or it sounded like super like, dude, bro, trust the science, you know, very like, um, like, why are you vaccine hesitant? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And just some of the stuff sounded so cuckish. It was so cucky. It was so like lefty Larry. It was so beta. You know what I'm talking about? Like, just. Well, my soul and I were talking about this yesterday, like, a lot of things that are, we consider common sense aren't just isn't common sense to a lot of people, right? 
to what would you attribute that? Like, why is it that some of the things that we talk about, just mm. open and honestly here with the TIA, with people listening to the podcast, and mm-hmm. we're like, yeah, that's just, that makes sense. And that doesn't make sense. Well, I think it's a few factors. Number one, do you trust mainstream media? Like, if you, like, you know, I used to watch The View and shit. You know what I'm talking about? My wife would be watching, and I'd sit there, oh, what's up, baby? What we'll be talking about? <laughs> what we'll be and them talking about? What but anyway, but here's, here's a big factor. Do you trust mainstream media? Do you think they're a reliable source and they've been fucking, you know, free of bias and just giving you the fucking facts? That's number one. Two, are you seeking out diverse thinkers? Like, oh, who's this Brett Weinstein, Weinstein, whatever. Or just opposing views in general. Yeah, just like, did you stumble across War Room Pandemic? Like, have you heard what this person has to say? I mean, shit. There's so many different voices. Like, do you fuck with Candace Owens? Does she make sense? Or you fucking can't stand her guts? Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, Hodge twins, are they corny? Or you think they make sense? And so on and so forth. So, for example, we'll have Normie Media on, on T in the bedroom. We'll put on, like, in the morning. We're like, fuck it. Let's see what the Normies are thinking today. What opinions are being assigned mm-hmm. to people? So, we'll have it on. And, and I'm trying to peep persuasion. I'm trying to peep propaganda. So, they're just like... They'll throw out a bunch of fucking stats, right? And I think to myself, okay, well, based on what? You know, what's the control group? Mm-hmm. Who, who conducted this study? Who funded this study? So on and so forth. Because the Pfizer jab that just got approval, it's only like 40% efficacy rate. And supposedly throughout the study, they lost their control group. But they were like, well, fuck it. We just got to keep going because this is too important. Mm-hmm. But anyway, I digress. And those trials don't end until 2023. Ain't man, ain't no telling. We're gonna see so much breaking news about this stuff. I don't know. But to answer your question, common sense, is it common? So, number one, do you trust mainstream media? Two, are you getting a diverse set of information and sources and, and so on? Like, have you heard that, you know, the feds played a role in the one six joint and that's why they stopped the investigation? Or are you just still thinking they these Trump supporters killed the cop? with bear spray and, and a fire extinguisher. Do you still buy that one? You know what I'm saying? Because to some people, we sound like, oh, y'all into conspiracies. It's like, no, 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 no. It's just we actually tuning in to different sources and different things. For example, did you know the Pfizer joint? First, they said it's 98% efficacy. Then they're like, it's 94. Now they're at 40, 42, 30. Some people say high 30s. And it's like, Y'all rushing the approval. That's normally not how approvals work. And I kept telling people throughout all this stuff, people kept saying, it's not even approved by the, by the, by, by, by. it ain't even approved yet. How, how you want me to take it? it ain't approved. And it, but it's not approved. That was like the main shit. Like I know Mighty Soul would be quick too. Like it ain't even FDA approved. And I'd be like, hey, 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 let's not, that ain't even the good argument because you already know. All they got to do is make a couple little texts and shit. Hey, hey, man, what you doing, man? Shit, you want to prove that thing? For sure. Or oh, whatever, yeah, right? That's what the conspiracy theorists, theorists are saying right now about the, the way it got approved. Yeah, exactly. Because they lost the, uh, the way the study was conducted, lost control group. That don't ever get approval. So how does the mainstream media spin it? They say, <laughs> you know, almost like... It's it's whatever, because, I mean, they've already given it to two billion people. So, yeah, it's been out for a year and a half and you're giving it to two billion people, however long it's been out. So, like, yeah, whatever. There's your freaking approval. Like, what more approval did you need type of smart aleckness? And people wonder why Latinos are so vax hesitant. And, you know, only like 29 percent of the black community in New York is even vaccinated. So now you telling me. We going back to segregation. We, we doing medical apartheid in New York City in 2021. I can't use the Vax water fountain. The, they, pla- the place with the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, ironic, right? Um, I cracked a joke yesterday on my birthday. Uh, I think they, some of my family members were like just walked in. They wanted to see the baby, and, and somebody made a joke like, "You better put hand sanitizer, and you better wear two masks, something, something." And I was like, "Yeah, you look like you've been around the unvaxed all day." <laughs> it's cold how they treat the unvaxed. Like at my show in San Jose, we had a VIP line and we had general admission. Yeah, and it was moving a little slow. And Porticitos a general mission. They're hanging in there, but they they looking like the unvaxed over there. It looks like this is how they about to start separating us. <laughs> First, it starts with UVIP and you not. Then it's like you can't sit at the counter with us, and you got to pick up your food around back. 
So really, you're the one to blame. You started this. Gecko started the segregation. No, you know, no, that was just because you know some people VIP <laughs> business, and they be expecting like, man, we better go first, player. <laughs> you know, uh, in everything that we've been talking about so far, you mentioned, or I was saying, how common sense isn't common, yeah. and how the mainstream media is going to spin things. Mm-hmm. The, have you been re- are you like? Re- are you really watching California right now by chance a little bit? Actually, just... um, a few things, and I'm glad because I have it in my notes. Oh, cool. Um, here's some things I'm noticing. The left media, the Democrats, Newsom, and the establishment, the deep state, not the, deep the, state. the no, over the sure. overstate, the in your face state. They are wanting to brand Larry Elder, African American, running for governor. Mm-hmm. They want to brand him as the black face of white supremacy. There's a documentary called Uncle Tom. I highly recommend it. Oh, yeah, what's it on? It's, uh, fuck. Is that Amazon Prime, I think? I think okay. it's on Amazon Prime. And it's, it's cool because it just, it makes an argument. The same way you could have, like, the woke, you know, black side of the conversation where it's like, nah, man, look, you know, we're still feeling the effects of this. And then you had redlining and, and then, you know, communities. And it's, it starts to sound a little Marxist, but some of the stuff is like, okay, well, shit. Yeah, I think there is racism. I think our educational system is pretty fucking racist. Right, because they're just like, pobrecito los morenos and the Latinos, they can't do math right, so we're gonna pr- just pass them up. Yeah, and, and it's like you ain't doing them no fucking no, no good. service. You, you you a lot of these teachers unions are against um, school choice, so yes, there are some systemic things when it comes to that. But anyway, the movie Uncle Tom it shows uh, it's really well done. They have people on there like Larry Elder, Candace Owens, Officer Tatum, um, Bryson, Bryson Gray. Oh, yeah. Had a couple of little segments oh, where they cool. like, you know, spoke to him. So basically, when you tune into mainstream, like let's just say it's the Breakfast Club or somebody, or you into TI or somebody, you're going to look at that movement as, well, yeah, they're cooning. They're shucking and jiving for the white man. These are Uncle Tom's. Of course. Look at his lineup. Who has a haircut like that? You're obviously out of touch with the black community. These are the arguments. Oh, Candace Owens, look at her. She don't even do her hair right. Ba 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 ba. These are all sellouts. That's how the argument is from the mainstream left. Yeah. Now on the Uncle Tom side, from that documentary, the the black conservative movement. Now you're hearing Bryson Gray saying his side of the story, why he decided to you know side with more of the right or the Republican. And why folks are on the other side are calling him a satellite, Uncle Tom, trying to clown. You know what I mean? So it was really well done. It sheds light on how basically um, the white liberal has employed the Jesse Jacksons and the Reverend Al Sharptons of the world and how to just like poke at, you know, pain and stuff in the black community and how they just quick to show up and like race monger like basically get paid off of race race skin skin victimhood 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 and um i'll just end it with this on this here's my siskel and ebert two thumbs up (laughs) if at the very least watch the portion where they have dr ben carson one of the most premier brain surgeons in like ever he's like the first surgeon to um pull apart two conjoined twins at the brain bro like if you got a brain issue you want dr ben carson to at least if he's playing golf or some shit at least recommend me somebody yeah dr Dr. carson bro the way trevor noah charlemagne the god um mainstream people are like ha 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 and today you know dr ben carson here's a clip and he's like well you know i grew up in detroit and in boston and you know the ghetto and he said ghetto funny because i think the the original ghettos were during the jewish german era so mm. it's, it has a different pronunciation mm-hmm. that's a european thing so he said it grew up in the ghetto said it like that yeah and trevor knows like ghetto he sounds like a, a a french guy trying to say cat in spanish and everyone's like ah, laughing at his expense mm. oh are you going to deposit basketballs in an uh, arena of you know and he's like trying to make a running joke of yeah. like are you going to make it precipitate in a factory of clothing removal for women ghetto you know what i mean i'm like bro this dude's a brain surgeon he just did a sermon at second baptist i watched that he did a great speech but it's just a shame bro like how they 
how the left tries to frame you and all that. And I don't even know how I got on this subject, <laughs> but Uncle Tom is a great documentary. Well, the reason I kind of brought it up was because we're talking about this. Appro- I mentioned earlier the approval rating since the fall of uh, Kabul has been nothing, right? He, there mm-hmm. still is a like if you were just a poll, just Democrats on mm-hmm. this whatever it was poll. Hasn't lost a single point of, of popularity with the talking Democrats. Talking about Biden? Yeah. Mm. And then now we're talking about Larry Elder and, and Gavin Newsom. And people in California, on some commentary, have been asked, you know, like, are you going to vote him out? And they were like, look, like, we voted for Biden. We couldn't vote for Trump. We support, you know, Kamala Harris. We're not going to recall Gavin Newsom, despite, you know, how the things have been. And it's just like, okay. And then you hear that uh, Trump got booed in Alabama when he yeah. brought up, you mm-hmm. know, the jab. Yeah. And they... So... You have a, a cult of personality on one side, the side that's constantly saying how this MAGA people yeah. and the, the right and the, the red, you know, this cult, you know, this red wave they talk about, they make that seem like it's such, it, it's not really, it's these people of free thinkers, the way I see it, right? Brown guy, white people, black, you know, Bryson, whatever, who will speak their minds, side with somebody, like they'll pick a side and ride with it. But when that side doesn't say something that jives with them, they're going to call you out. They're going to boo you. They're going to say no. They're going to fight back. They're yeah, they don't back. give a damn if you're Trump. No. Meanwhile, on that side, no matter what happens, this cult of personality yeah. is always number one. Yeah, because for one, when it comes to when you're raising someone to be leftist or when you're indoctrinating someone to be leftist, you leave out all the bad shit about being a leftist. You know what I'm saying? You sugarcoat Marxism. Mm-hmm. Um you, uh, of course, progressive. It sounds cool. I think in theory, a lot of that shit. Yeah, these words have been commandeered. I don't even think mm-hmm. they mean the same thing they meant 50 yeah, years ago. Yeah, liberal. Like we said on the last episode, JFK, by modern uh, terms, he'd be considered more of a Republican. There's nothing liberal about mandating these masks, mandating this medicine, mandating any of these, uh, anything, honestly. Yeah, and, and to your point, a lot of folks that just happen to be Democrat, this is another thing the Democrats have going for them. Besides fear-mongering, victimhood, is painting the right as racist and a lot of other things. Yeah. So who, who wants to be associated with racist? Nobody. Yeah. So you're never going to even look over there. They use your own empathy against you. Like, they label the right like, oh, man, they conspiracy, they QAnon, they Nazis, they this, they that. And it's like... Well, from from my investigation, they just kind of like love America, love freedom, love the Constitution, love their guns, love their God, leave the church open. Let's have a strong economy. Let's not spend too much. Let's not be punks to these other countries. Let's be strong, be a superpower, like head on a swivel. We are under attack. In that same vein. (laughs) (laughs) For those of y'all that are just listening and you can't see me. I just want to give you that context. <laughs> I, I'm not actually turning into a preacher right now. Uh, in that same vein, what would you say that maybe what the mainstream media does knowingly um, and kind of viciously is use Westerners' uh, sensibilities of being kind-hearted and wanting to help the downtrodden and wanting yeah. to help the world by painting this other side as the racist, as a whatever, making them seem like the bad guy because they feel and like greedy. they greedy, tug on the heartstrings of the people on the left. Meanwhile, honestly, it's kind of doing the opposite effect. It's having the opposite effect. It's making the side really malicious, really mean-spirited people who want to take things away from the others. Yeah, and that's why like a lot of uh, quote-unquote people of color, right? That's what they like to call us. That's why a lot of quote-unquote people of color stick with the Democrats because they've already been told Republicans is the white boys and they don't want you over there anyway. How many comments do I get a day where it's like, oh, dude, it's- you'll never be accepted by the whites. He wants to be white so bad. Look, he dressed in white now. And it's like, damn, bro. Like, I dare you what what sure I got to wear? Nelson. Chucks. I got to wear Chucks every day, bro. Like, damn, I got to wear Dickies and Ben Davis. Like, <laughs> Texas don't even really dress like that anyway. No. That's like, you still watching American Me and shit. You stuck in 92. You know what I'm saying? Colors just came out. You thinking you Sean Penn or somebody. Dude, in the LA Times, like the libs of TikTok, they made that, uh, did you see that collage post, you know, of all the different headlines from different papers about Larry Elder? Oh, it's like, it's like man. five or six different headlines. I need a screenshot. Uh, let me find it while we're talking because it, so we, we can read them all. It is unbelievable. And, and, but Larry Elder props to him, shrugged it off. He's not letting him get to it. I think Kennedy had him on to talk about it and I haven't watched the, the clip yet, but he's rolling with the punches Boom. really well. He's killing it, dude. He could very well win. So check this out. To all my, um, my black folk and Latinos, all the minorities and stuff in California, 
I don't care if you're Democrat or you're Republican. I don't care if you're probably not even going to vote in this recall. At least look into Larry Elder, for real, and just see what the hell is this dude about and what is he talking about, even if you don't vote for him. Don't let the mainstream media get away with this. Like, to me, that's kind of racist, right? That you would... Kind of. That you would, like, just because this dude is running for Republican, you trying to use his race against him, you calling him all kind of Uncle Toms and this and that. Uh, the black face of white supremacy. That is the most racist headline I've ever heard in my life. They they basically saying he's like Tyrone. What's his name? Tyrone Biggins. Uh, the uh, oh the, the Chappelle. Clay, yeah, what is his name? Clisby Bisbee. Uh, yeah, stop, stop, stop. It's is it uh, Clay Bisbee? It's uh oh shit. Yeah, it's something like that. Basically, they trying to make it seem like this a black dude in a clan outfit. Yeah. Okay. And New York Times had the audacity. L.A. Times. Oh, L.A. Times. Boy, y'all some clowns over there. Larry man. Elder is a black face of white supremacy. You've been warned. Larry Elder talks a lot. Too bad you can't believe anything he says. Larry Elder bashes the media, <laughs> offers no solutions, remind you of any ex-president, question mark? Dude, come on. You can't possibly read that in such a beautiful state like California and believe it. Um, I think the L.A. Times just lost credibility. I think people not, not buying what they're selling... Uh, you can't fool everybody all the time. We starting to peep game. Uh, a lot of Latinos are, got low approval of uh, Newsom. Uh, people walking away from the Democratic Party left and right. And this shows how elitist thinking will stop at nothing. They're willing to ruin their economy. They're, they want to shut down your state. They want homelessness just running rampant, crime going up. You can steal $1,000 worth of shit out of Walgreens on a daily basis and get nothing. They soft on crime. They, they talking about uh, if you identify as female, you can go be in the lady jail. The, the dudes from the man jail can mm-hmm. now live in the lady They're so damn backwards. They confusing your kids with critical race theory, all kind of buku pronouns. These kids can barely read. And they're hitting them with buku pronouns and genders. So the elites over there, they don't care about your kids' education. They don't care about your small business. They don't care about your economy. They're willing to sacrifice all that just to keep homeboy in. They're like, they might as well just come out and say, hey, man, we're just doing propaganda for the Democratic Party and Governor Newsom. And we really don't give a shit if uh, they shut down churches again and they're going to force mask, force jab your kids. It's approved by the FDA now, y'all. Come uh, roll your sleeve up. All high schoolers, eighth graders, roll your sleeves up. It's approved. Uh, Parents, we don't give a fuck what the hell you got to say. Get the hell out the way. We're the government. We FDA. Come on. Roll your sleeve up. Yeah. It's, it's, It's scary how dangerously real it's getting. You know, if you look at history. You know, at some point, man, people are going to have to snap the fuck out of it. Yeah. And stop, like, stop taking... The mainstream media is just a word as gospel. Like, okay, well, fuck. They said new. They said Newsom's doing a good job. Anyway, Lil Boosie is a free speech advocate. Bro, did you watch it? I watched a lot of it. Nice. Uh, thank you. That was excellent recommendation. I never thought I'd. First of all, Lil Boosie's already was already top ten in my book. Like, that's how much uh, uh, I love his music. This motherfucker jumped up to top five. Because he's a free speech advocate. <gasps> he broke the top five. We've talked about your now, top five. Now, he's in five. my top five now for sure. He might even be number two. <laughs> because when you standing up like that. Below Pimp C? Just below Pimp C? Just right, just right after. And they wow. cut from the same cloth. Just right after Pimp C. Probably. Sorry. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a free speech advocate. Uh, he went up there to the breakfast club and up against total opposition. He did not bend. He did not fold. He kept saying... As a parent, I have the right to try to instill certain values in my fucking family and stop trying to turn this into some gay bashing, into hate speech. And really, it was a struggle session, bro. This was straight up out the color guard. I believe, what is it called? The red guard, uh, Mao's cultural revolution. Boosie kept saying it's because this industry It's because of this industry. They're attacking the black community. He was saying... um, they're using artists to brainwash these kids. He's saying, y'all forcing a narrative. He said, I'm not a puppet. I don't have a boss in this business. I can still say what I want to say. Everybody else got to shut up and fall in line. I would argue, Boosie, what if I told you 
this isn't just about hip hop culture, the music industry, and the black community. What if I told you it was bigger than that? It was cultural and other countries are involved, actively involved as part of their attack. You know what I mean? You, you just, you just create uh, division, you're censoring, you have a social credit score, you got cancel culture, you got politically correctness. Because the minute you lose free speech, I mean, you're kind of fucked. Yeah. Um, he basically was saying, like, why can't I have an opinion? That's what he was saying. He's like, it's getting to the point to where straight people can't have an opinion. And y'all, he's like, y'all putting the kids above the parents. And I'm like, Boosie, I'm screaming through my phone like, bro, it's Mao's cultural revolution. You're in a struggle session right now. They want you to self-flagellate. They want you to whip yourself in the public square. He didn't bend, half bend. He <sighs> stood his fucking ground. I hadn't listened to a whole Breakfast Club interview in over a year. And he, like, whether it was Charlemagne or... An DJ Envy was pretty quiet most of the time, but Angela Char and fucking Charlemagne were really just trying to push those buttons. And then there was the uh, uh, cross-dresser. Oh, Flame what, Monroe? Yeah, Flame Monroe. Uh, I, I'm, he's like a comedian or he's something He's funny, like dude. That. Or, um, sorry, whatever. Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, but here's the thing. That was the best part of the whole interview. Where him and Boosie had a whole convo. Because Boosie kept defending himself. He's like, bro... I have, he said, I have gay employees, family members, friends. He's like, I, I love them. I trust them. He was like, a straight person to steal from you before a gay person. Dude, that was hilarious. <laughs> he was like, my sister's gay. And then in the beginning, he said Chinese's. He Chinese? was like, he's like, man, who's yeah. Who's nieces? Yeah, they're like, who's nieces? He's like, Chinese, you know, Chinese's. People, just different people, you know, people from China, they, they want to buy my, he said, they want to help me make a uh, uncensored social media. Right. Because he kept getting banned. Kept getting flagged. 10.5 million, just gone. He was just wilding out. I don't know. But but here's the thing, though. When Flame Monroe chimed in and was saying, I agree with a lot of stuff Boosie has to say, and we need to have this conversation. And, you know, he was very respectful. We took a photo backstage, blah, 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 blah. And it was almost like, this is a reality of it. He's, he's not a hateful person. Stop trying to pin him as a bigot. Stop trying to punish him and silence him. To where he can't have an opinion. He can't say how he would like to raise his kids or, or how he sees things. Shit, Taliban entitled to their opinion. And they're allowed to tweet. And they're not very pro-homosexual homo uh, uh, homosexual community. <laughs> they could tweet. Y'all, why Keep that same energy y'all putting on Boosie and put it on them. But anyway, very proud of Boosie, man. I hope that somebody can just leave him comments like a breadcrumb trail that's like, hey, man... Look into Mao's cultural revolution. Uh, look into how another country can possibly destabilize us by having us fighting over stuff. And they, they get take away your freedom of speech. They get to implement a social credit score. They benefit so much. They weaken your, their younger generation, arguably, if you're demonizing masculinity. Oh, that's going to be an easy country to take over. Yeah. They done defunded their police. They fucking hate each other. You're not allowed to talk to your neighbor. They gave they, up their weapons. Pfft, what? I mean, look at this chessboard. The reason we do this show is because right now a lot of us are pawns. If you zoom out and look at this global chessboard, it's like it's countries playing against countries. And some of us are damn near in checkmate. It's like seven moves away. It's like I'm going to move here. I'm going to take this rook and then I'm going to try to block for my queen and I'm going to try to attack you from over here. But I can't because I got to defend the right side. It's a global chess game. And all the people that are like, you should never get into politics. It's bad for your career. You should, don't talk about that. No, you're going to sound like a Trump lover. Blah, 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 blah. You're conspiracy. Y'all the pawns because they chipping away at the U.S. dollar. They printing up more money. Taxes about to go up. We were just energy independent. We ain't no more. They want to mask your kids up again. They keep hitting y'all with variants. You're not allowed to question where the thing, where the virus came from. You can't. It's about to be checkmate. So wake the fuck up. Don't be a pawn. Got to quote uh, Cersei Lannister from Game of Thrones when at the beginning of the the whole series, like first season, they're talking, they're they're having this conversation about the whole Game of Thrones, right? The whole Game of Thrones is a game for the throne of these seven, you know, realms or whatever the fuck they call them. And the f great quote is, in the, in the, when you're in the Game of Thrones, mm. you win or you die. 
Mm. And we are in this this kind of landscape where in a lot of places, if you if you don't bend the knee to some people, you will you will be killed. You'll be gone, right? Yeah, yeah. Here in our country, it's not there yet, but the more and more that you start giving things away, just all willy nilly. Willy like, motherfucking nilly. What is the result? That what's going on in Australia, they literally have camps there now. They have these isolation camps. They're not allowed to talk to their neighbor. And it's not that many cases. One. There was one <laughs> when this initially all like initially went down. There was one. I thought that was New Zealand. I wasn't New they Zealand. They just had one. You're right. You're right. But anyway, Zealand. they have a low, like it ain't even, even if it's, it's not like someone, it's not like society came together and decided, all right, y'all, we're going to keep our freedoms and we ain't going to lock down until we hit like 300,000 cases in the span of six weeks or some metric. Right. Like, all right. When ICU is totally over, like uh, when the death cases reach this amount, it's just, mm, yeah, I don't want you talking to your neighbor anymore. Huh? Yeah. Uh, you know what? Let's make it three thousand. Mm, five thousand dollar fine. Mm, who the fuck is you? And then it's like, and if you're further than five kilometers from your house, we're going to hit you with the five. That it make it seven thousand. It's like willy nilly, arbitrary, just tyranny. You, you know, know. With the people that get upset when you say things like, and I've been saying this from the beginning and probably prematurely, but anyway, it's just the way I felt that a lot of the things that were coming down the pipeline from month one, month two, like, like the fucking face diapers, like the, uh, the distancing and the, once you get into a restaurant, you have to have it on. But once you sit down, you can take all that kind of stuff from month one. I'm like, this makes absolutely no yeah. sense. You mean to tell me the hostess has to seat me with a face diaper, but when I get into my booth, I take it off. And there's no person next to me, you know, catty corner yeah. to me. Yeah, man, it, it's a form of warfare, bro. Like when you, when you, when you're attacking a country's economics by forcing them to lock down because you have a lot of influence in these, or, you know, these uh, organizations that have a lot of say, you know, CDC. Some I got a partner at the WHO. Um, when you're attacking them via information war, when you're overwhelming them, when you're dividing them, it's like you just hitting them. There, uh, I just started that audio book, Unrestricted Warfare. One of the interesting quotes is, when two parties are at war, but one of the parties don't even know they're under attack, they're at a disadvantage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I did an Instagram Live, right? So I challenged my soul, and I want to challenge you to do the same thing. You're already pretty regular about doing your lives, but I, want to see, I wanted to see if we could do one every day. But it doesn't have to be super long. It could be five minutes. It could be 50 minutes. I did one last night. My soul, obviously, y'all were out with the family for your birthday. She didn't do her, her first I one. Did, I did one. You did one yesterday? Uh -huh. Okay, cool. So she's going to start her first one today. And I ended up doing 30 minutes. I had a bunch of TIA jump in there. And somebody mentioned Unrestricted Warfare. Has Shingo gotten that book yet? You know what, bro? The fucking audio version blows. What? It's terrible. Is this the book that you said you were trying to get? Yes, and that's why I went ahead and did the audio version. That's what I thought because I mentioned I go. So I'm I probably think he's trying to find it. I'm probably already on the list, but <laughs> because when I called every bookstore in town, I said, "Hey, I'm looking for this book," and they're like, "Did you whisper it like that too?" And yeah, and they're like, "Oh, is it the one that says um China's plot to uh blah 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 to America this and that?" I'm like, yeah, they're like, "Oh, okay. Well, look, check this out, man. You got to come in, and and um." Basically, you got to speak to our manager. Basically, this is their their spiel. It's like these are print on demand. It's like out of print type of thing. Basically, we made it to where you got to put your name down, where you stay, how give many us, guns you your got, firstborns. how many guns you got. You got an uh, Amazon Echo in your house? No, here's one for free. Go ahead, plug Ooh, it up. Yeah, do you have a uh, do you have a Google? Uh, no, here's an Alexa too. You can have both yeah, of them. Go Alexa, ahead. all that shit. Set one up in your room, one in the studio, one in your yeah. living room. Leave your webcam open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't put anything over it. Because it works better that way. Yeah. Actually, here's another one. Here's an external one you can have for free, too. <laughs> God damn. Just track everything. <laughs> what TV you got? You got an Apple oh, TV? Oh, man. Put this little micro... Put this little chip. Did you get the jab? Put oh, this chip oh, in you your got arm. It? Oh, we got everything already. Never mind. I'll See, this back. is the uh, Mark of the Beast 2021. We want to put this on you. Don't uh, mind the name. Coincidence. Dude, more people on, on the news or just on TV have been saying things like that. Like, that. what's going on on the left is is satanic and it's very it's devil-like i haven't heard anybody on the tv say any fox or any any news organization say that this is like straight satanic shit in a long time it's pretty weird it was, yeah it's kind of weird to hear well if you look at it like this bro um sometimes that stuff could sound very like oh man y'all fucking reaching like this is not spiritual warfare However, I wouldn't say that it's not. No, I'm. Yeah, no, I'm not yeah. saying you. I, my, anybody listening, I'm not trying to put words in Rob's mouth. <laughs> I'm not trying to get fake news. <laughs> but check this out, Rob. Um, I heard this little sermon. It went viral. I put it on my Instagram. 
I had already heard people try to frame it that way. Like, look, man, these people are against, you know, they're willing to ch- shut down your church. You know what I mean? Like, they're just doing ungodly things. They're, they're, they want to play God. They're about transhumanism. You know, they're all about abortion. Um, they, wa- they can't wait to clone you. They can't wait to download your consciousness into a fucking thumb drive, cy- cyborg. Like, the robots are coming. AI is here. It's going to get to the point to where you got to merge with the technology in order to compete with the technology. Arguably, that's kind of anti-God. So there's a lot of ways to frame it as it not being godly, a.k.a. satanic, right? Mm -hmm. For example, if you're willing to do all kind of genocide and you're just willy-nilly doing evil stuff, that could be categorized as satanic. Now, when I heard the sermon and the preacher, you know, he's, he's... Paint, he's uh, painting a picture, he's using metaphors and illustration, and he basically says at one point, this is how I know it's a demon, because it keeps on moving. First it's black versus white, this versus that, man versus female, you know, boom, boom, vax versus unvax, mass versus not mass. He's like, that's how I know it's a demon, because it keeps on moving. And when he said that, I was like, well, it's because they're attacking us along different fronts. It's, it's just Marxism. It's just division. It's to destabilize us. It's a cultural revolution. And then I'm like, but that's an interesting way to look at it. Like, it keeps moving. And it's an evil game. It's an evil chess game. Power could be considered demonic. You know, you have to be an ungodly person to want to just run the world and so on. So I, I kind of, I feel it, bro. I feel yeah. that vibe. Like, we just have to, like, for example, if your country truly is under attack and the dollar may be imploding, you know, they might be doing that, what's that, Cloud Piven, where they want to force socialism on us? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Cloud, we talked about, yeah, we talked about it last episode. It's like, I can't pronounce it, Cloud Piven, I don't know, I got to look into it. But my point is, when, when you are under attack like that and you are in a crisis and shit does hit the fan. That's when people start to want to go read Revelations. <laughs> that's when you want to start doing your little push-ups. You know, that's when you want to get strict with your sons. All right, Miko, we're not fucking around no more. You know what I'm saying? We got to grow these vegetables or like go help your sister fetch the pail of water from the rain because, mm-hmm. you know, like they fucking cyber hacked or whatever. You're going to need spiritual, uh, uh, spiritual weapons in a spiritual war. That's why I feel like what we talked about on Chingo Chats. The dads got to be dads. The fathers got to be fathers. The husbands got to be husbands. We can't afford to be uh, uh, having a loose ship. You see what I'm saying? Like, we got to be the man of the house. When shit hits the fan, I I need my daughters to be pioneer women. I need y'all to know how to fucking do some shit. Because it's just me and your, your mom and the girls. So, it's like... You know, I'm a rapper. I don't be knowing how to. <laughs> I know how to tell jokes. I don't be knowing how to like how, how we gonna clean this rainwater and, and use it to do this and that. The filtration, the water harvesting. Oh, that's in my mouth. Listen, if y'all are a part of the TIA, but you're not a part of the All Access, you'll probably you're well not probably you'll get the Chingo Chat next month. But episode thirty, Chingo Chat thirty, which we put up that's up now. One of the best Chingo Chats we've done. I mean, they're all great, but yeah. sometimes there's been like two or three of them to it, yeah. that you just, and I'll, actually, I'll show you how to get the full thing on your phone because I know you don't have it on your phone, like the full private RSS feed that you get when you join patreon.com forward slash Red Built Tamales. It was so damn good. Like, I re listened to it and I forgot that it was us. Like, the conversation was just so good. I got lost in the combo. We got to make some clips. I know it's a premium content exclusive, right? Mm-hmm. But we got to make some clips of some of that stuff. But go on. Well, also, yeah, maybe we can we can ping pong with this after the show is like now that we're at like the six month mark, because we started that show in uh, January, I think. So 30 episodes. We've been doing it for 30 weeks. I, I feel like and we give it to the TIA fresh out of the oven every week. And we give it to people that aren't on the all access tier the month after. And I was like, all right, we have such a big catalog now. Maybe we can start dripping these out. Because they are, you know, six months, four months, five months old. But we'll talk about that later. Just to- yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree, bro. Yeah, you always come with the ideas. That shit always makes sense. And but works. but it was so good. And, and yeah, and what you just talked about is just it's it's an important topic, you know. And <laughs> we kept saying like puro puro what do you say puro vato puro alpha? vato alpha way. And it was a lot of that. But I gotta listen to it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll make sure you have it on your phone. But um, shit. Why did we bring that up? Well, it's because I was basically saying, you know, crises happen. I'm not saying go be a doomsday prepper and make a bunker. However, a lot of us 
are a little dependent on like i kind of need my local right, government right, right. to have electricity for me bro mm-hmm. i need to charge my fucking phone you know what i'm saying like i got a post i'm in denver this weekend <laughs> like you know what i'm saying like i i depend on my local municipal water fucking district to have me some clean water and some water pressure um which as somebody that pays taxes you expect well, yeah right? that's, like, what you, yeah. that's what we're all doing here yeah so so my point is i know i'm giving lame examples but my point is i'm not a pioneer man I, I don't have... You can't tell me right now, Rob, go in your backyard, fetch a dozen eggs. Right. I'd be like, huh? What eggs? Uh, okay, you don't at least have some eggs? Okay, get some vegetables at your garden. Huh? Well, well, I'm gonna get, well, my, well, how? How am I going to do that? I ain't got none. See what I'm saying? So God forbid there's, you know, shit hits the fan and you sitting there talking about, damn, they banned ammo from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> What a way to segue. I don't even know. Sometimes, this is what I like about the show. Sometimes it will have shit that we know are good points to talk about, that we've read about, watch, whatever. But all Chingo Bling needs sometimes is about, you know, one to two, maybe three points. And those three points will turn into sub points. And then the show is over because we've did an hour and a half or an hour on those topics, which is great. I love the free flowingness of it. Then there's a thesis. But you're, <laughs> there is a thesis. Did you ever write a thesis for school? Any kind of... What the fuck is a thesis? It's just a long-term paper? Sure. Uh... There were a couple classes where you had to turn in like a fucking monstrosity. Nothing that you remember that like struck a nerve as a young... Nah, it wasn't one of those like the case for, you know, Biggie versus Tupac as a microcosm. <laughs> okay. Nah, it wasn't nothing like that. I'm just curious. You yeah, know. Um, some other shit. Like I had to do a, a business plan in my entrepreneurship class. We'll talk about that. So look, Biden bans Russian import of ammo. So your president just came on TV and was like, hey, man, ain't no more ammo coming in from Russia. Yeah. Why? So the Biden administration Department of State announced that it will soon prohibit the importation of Russian ammunition into the United States, according to the release from the Department of State's website uh, and new and pending permit applications for the permanent importation of firearms and ammunition manufactured or located in Russia will be subject to the policy of denial. Are ARs uh, Russian? ARs themselves? I don't... Mm, I'm just I'm just trying to figure out what all this little rule or ban is going to entail. Like, like for example, all 9mm ammo comes from Russia. Mm-hmm. Uh, the release goes on to note, the new policy will take effect upon the publication of a federal register notice expected September 7th, 2021. They will remain in place for a minimum of 12 months. The sanctions will only be lifted after a 12-month period if the executive branch determines and certifies to Congress that Russia has yet to serve, uh, has yet to met several conditions, including providing reliable assurances that it will not use chemical weapons in violation of international law, or uh, it's not making preparations to use chemical weapons in the future. It's, I don't know. Okay. So basically, they're trying to. The, our government is trying to frame it as we're going to punish Russia by buying less of their ammo, and really, it's an excuse to punish us. Isn't that how it sounds? Basically, it's like, how do I take my kid's PlayStation away? <laughs> All right. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're upset with our neighbor Ted, who keeps putting putting his trash can over here by our car. Therefore. We're not going to... Uh, you can't have your uh, PlayStation. <laughs> this is from the NRA, so take that with what you will or how you will. Okay. But they're reading from the policy itself, or quoting it, rather. I was going to ask you, like, okay, who put this info out? Because I'm curious if the mainstream media is even going to be like, oh, by the way, they're trying to take y'all's motherfucking ammo away. Crazy. By it, the way... And I just caught this today, too. I don't know if it's breaking or, or super, super new, but I think... Mm, I mean, it's from the NRA, so I'm think. I think by Friday there'll be more development on it. Yeah, and it's, it's, it feeds, like the conspiracy theory people. Totally, it, it feeds it because if if I let's just say I'm let let me pretend. What country could I be? Mm, let me just say I'm a country in Asia, you right? Be, you want to be mutual? Or, uh, let's just say I'm a country in Asia, okay, right? Okay. And let's just say I had some influence over the leader. Of a country and over North America. Mm, let's say America. Okay. All right. I would love for my puppet leader that I got over there, my homeboy mm-hmm. that's helping us out. I would love if he would help us figure out a way. Like, hey, man, you think you could um, 
sanction Russia to stop sending Russian-made ammo and weapons for sale to Americans. And they'd probably be like, oh, okay, well, people are going to probably like, it's going to raise some eyebrows. Just say that it's, it's a sanction against Russia so that they don't use chemical weapons and shit like that. And they're going to be like, well, we don't, what are you basing that on? Are they doing that? No, 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 not just, you know, just in case they have in the past. Let's, can we do that? Well, um, well, I guess. I mean, they, I guess they could get ammo from somewhere else. There'll still be some ammo around. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, thanks. Because the best way to attack is to where a motherfucker don't notice. That's also in the book. Unrestricted Warfare? Yeah. is In that book, Unrestricted Warfare, it basically says, like, like su- such a patient uh, strategy, mm-hmm. like this, um, this whole, it's like a 100-year war type of thing. It's like you're just chipping away at their culture. You're just trying to get influence. It's a game of inches. You're just trying to see if you can get a little athlete. You could um, wine and dine, maybe a movie studio you can invest in, maybe buy 50% of that, a little percentage over there, invest in a young politician coming up named Swalwell, just, you know, fundraise, just whatever. Get your little professor that's on your team. Just basically flood them with your products, your media, your ideas. At while not allowing any of theirs into your country. So flood them with your products, your cheaply made products, your media, because it creates an economic destabilization. Mm-hmm. But you know, um, yeah, it depends, man. If you look at it through that filter and that lens, you probably could be like, man, why would they sanction Russia over some shit? And it's like, I always picture the nerds in the chess room. You got an army of nerds thinking of shit. How could we get them? Man, okay, we want their citizens to have less weapons. That way they can just really have some authoritarian, you know, while we're taking away their freedom of speech and while we're, the, where we're dividing them, while we're hurting their pockets and confusing them and overwhelming them and giving them fake information, <clears throat> let's also disarm them. It's just like, again, <laughs> no one else, no one else other than the TIA and people that we fuck with see this. Like, just say Russia. They'll let you. Man, they said Russia so much for the last <laughs> how many years? Yo, so the um, Duvalin Papi is his name, right? The yeah. photographer at Duvalin Papi. Interesting name, but serious story. He was a photographer who was out there at the event in D.C. on 1-6. Well, one day he co- he's uh, he's somewhere out on assignment or something, and his family's like, hey, man, the feds are here. Say they're looking for you. And he had to go turn himself in, and apparently they let him out. Yeah, I didn't. I saw that uh, Jorge Ventura had posted that you know that our friend has been released. More updates to come. I didn't keep up with it. I was just happy that obviously he got he got released. Man, I wonder what they told him, what they asked him. You got to imagine too that they had him sign something on his way out. Like you can't talk about this. It's an open investigation regarding an event that has a commission and blah blah blah. Yeah, but I thought they stopped the investigation, trying to look into uh, militias and all that because they realized their cover got blown. They had all their informants and all the feds already in all the top militias. Like they, they said, oh, okay, we're all right, all right, fine, fine, y'all win. No more fucking investigation. So fact check me on that. But maybe we can investigate, ask around, research, ask home, reach out to him. Like, hey, bro, uh, what the fuck happened? He might be scared to do to talk about it. We might have Jorge back on. He might know a lot about it. I'm sure he will. And he's got this documentary that he's been working on coming out since the last time he was on here. So he'll have plenty to say. I do want to say this real quick. Mm-hmm. It just came out a couple of minutes ago. Dr. Fauci moves the goalpost again, says U.S. could return to normal by spring 2022 if vaccination rates increase. Why are we still listening to this guy every day? Oh, on well, my live yesterday, I started just freestyling and improvising. And I did this whole little like, it's not like a sketch, but I'm just in the middle of my rant saying like, Apa, usted no, no escuchó que el doctor Fauci en el correo electrónico que ya salió que era un cover. Ah, ¿quién chingas dijo, mijo? Pinche Joe Rogan. ¿Le, hace, <laughs> ¿Le haces caso a estos pinches? ¿Eres QAnon o qué, cabrón? Let me find out. ¿Qué andas de QAnon, pendejo? Yo no, I didn't raise no pinche QAnon. Don't talk bad about Fauci because he was on Telemundo. It's like, Apa, es propaganda. Is your dad Jerry Garcia? Basically, right? It's like, Apa, it's, it's biased. ¿Qué es eso? <laughs> ¿Qué me dijiste, güey? Bias. Anyway. The normies, bro. 
Well, <clears throat> we can look forward to spring 2022 now, you know. Now just keep, now everybody just keep, get your hopes up. You how, know? Did, how does man still got a job? I don't know, but at least he's not on TV every day. Now he's just kind of, now he's like Biden. He's running shit from the basement. Did you hear Trump clowned him? He's like, you know, he said, he told me he was an athlete. He said, sir, I used to be an excellent athlete. I said, oh, okay, whatever, whatever. And then I saw him throw the baseball. Did anyone see? Oh, <laughs> I did. He did the act out. I didn't see that. Trump went like this. Oh. And then he said, it almost hit first base. It did. It did. It almost hit first base. Like, it was like punchline, tag, tag. It's funny. Fucking had me dying, dude. He, he's swearing <laughs> more and more on these rallies, and it's so funny. Like, I, I just wish a president would say that as a president, not after. But he's like, everything woke turns to shit. Everything woke. It does. It, it does. does. It absolutely does. <laughs> And then, hey, and check this out. Then he was like, I got the jab. It's good. It works. Boo! Okay, let's go back to talking about woke hey, shit. Hey, uh, woke shit. Your freedom's important. <laughs> Let me walk that back. Your freedom is important. <laughs> your freedom's important. Hey, I made it available, but here it is, Alabama. If it doesn't work, you'll be the first to know. I'll be like, <clears throat> Alabama. Dude, but, you know what? Then he goes, but it's good. It works. It works. Ooh, boy, Trump, they on your ass, boy. I'm telling you, man, and we can keep talking about this for, well, we will be talking about this for the next few years. Um, I don't know. Maybe because, okay, let me, re- let me start this over. I don't know if he runs again in 2024. Mm. Just because of how polarizing this man has become. Probably in history, the most polarizing president to ever sit in the White House as president. Mm. If Republicans, GOP, conservatives, whatever you want to call them, have any desire to actually take power again, I don't think they can have him run. So you don't think he's going to run? That's not what I said. Oh, okay. That's not what I said. What you're saying... If you want to win. Oh, you're saying they're not going to give him the uh, primary, the whatever? Well, even if he runs, though, I'm saying, like, are we just going to have a repeat of all of the um, things, all the uh, anomalies that happened, you know, this last Mm -hmm. time? You don't think they're going to do anomalies on DeSantis? I don't think you can get... I don't think you can smear him the way you can smear... Man, they Trump. called Larry Elder the black face of white supremacy. They could smear anybody. They can, they can. But even that is the LA Times, right? You're not having a national coverage of Larry Elder being a white supremacist. You're having LA Times. I do mean, it. if he's if he runs for president, they can, they will. No, you're right, you're right. Yeah. But the, the example right now is Larry DeSantis. Elder. Right? Yeah, no, yeah, mm-hmm. right, right. I'm, that's all I'm saying. I hope I'm wrong. I hope that we can have another campaign trail of him versus uh, Kamala Harris. That'd be great. Well, who else is the left going to run? You know, uh, who? I mean, you have the whole the whole cabinet of people that tried to run originally. You got Elizabeth Warren will probably try again. Who knows? Bernie might be like third time's a charm. Um, who knows? Bernie can't get right. No, there's no way. It's too late. He's he's said too much shit. In my opinion, he's put yeah, his foot much, in his mouth well, too yeah, many times. But, but they'll hide it, man. Biden said a gang of shit, and people have no fucking clue. It was like, oh, even Longoria said. Oh, George Lopez said. I don't know. The reason I say that is because I think the reason he's taken so long to say, I'm sure there's a whole plan to this. We know there's a big plan, huge plan. But um, they're probably trying to decide, like, is it smart to run again if you actually want to take power back on this side? I don't know. I think just the way that DeSantis talks, you know, the way he's able to compose himself, the way he's able to debate, it's just, it's going to get across to people better than uh, if Trump does it. But, but, I mean, you would think, here's my thing, you would think, like, look at DeSantis. Isn't he a more um, unifying version of, of the Trump talking points? Like, is he still pro-freedom? Like, like, for example, can we all agree, like, it's fine, it doesn't have to be Trump. America, can we come together? No, it's the thing, bro. It's like, they already can't stand DeSantis. Like, to you and I, mm. it's like, He's doing a good job, it seems, in Florida. It seems like he has things under control. He communicates well. He, they can't pull out no dirt on him. He's like ex-Navy, so on and so on. How could you possibly throw mud on this? This, this dude, come on, man. And they sure enough, <sighs> do you really want to live in a state like Florida? I mean, it is a debacle. Bro, they will have you, like, it sounds like they're talking about Cuomo. They'll have a picture of the 75 doctors that came out and protested yesterday as like his every cover will just be all those doctors standing behind. Everything, bro. Like when he did his uh, jab rollout, he partnered up with Publix. Right. It's like a big grocery store chain and this and that. They're like, oh, what a coincidence. Publix donated to his campaign. And he's like, the community voted on it. They want it. Like he gave his reasons. This is why 
we partnered with Publix to give out the jab. I don't know what you're trying to spin, but sure enough, like the same way people on the right can look at Cuomo and be like, dude, grandma killer, total dereliction of duty, debacle after debacle, molester in chief. You know what I'm saying? Like just this dude is trash. That's the same way Democrats look at DeSantis. Let me let me put it like this. It's like, like DeSantis derangement syndrome. Yeah, just like the way they're having um, Larry Elder derangement syndrome right now. But let me put it like this. More people definitely got more politically involved over the last year, wouldn't you say? Last mm-hmm. year, year and a half. Mm-hmm. Also, people have been at home. They haven't, a lot of them, unfortunately, haven't been able to work or they haven't, you know, they've been confined to their, their houses, their offices, whatever, their home offices. So you have every opportunity to, because you're more politically inclined, to take it upon yourself to go watch the full C-SPAN, you know, court hearings, interviews, what have you. You have the ability to go find alternative media. You can even still watch mainstream media. But everything that we've been, been through in the last year and a half, they, they, people are still so lazy that they choose to get the snippets, the two-minute arguments on mainstream media, and nothing else. That blows my mind. Because you have the time to go watch and read everything else. Yeah, a lot of times, man, I don't even think you could just attribute it just to laziness or time. Well, that's what everybody said before, and I would agree. I'm so busy. I got work. I got the kids. I don't have time to sit here and all this. You know, I don't have time for it. But you've been at home for fucking a year and a half. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Time is just an excuse. Like, it's got to be something else. I think it's probably even like a, um, I'm not going to use the word brainwashing and stuff like that, but when you when it is a cultural norm still, for mm-hmm. the most part, when it's a cultural norm that the TV is to be trusted, right? Because you sound fringy and you sound a little crazy when you say things like fake news to some people. To some people, when you say, dude, it's propaganda. The media is controlling us. They're the division. They're the virus. They get paid by Big Pharma. They're biased. They're not credible. They're just like, bro, you sound very fringy. Like, you sound like you over there queuing on and it up. But a lot of people would say that the young vote may have been what pushed Biden over in some of these places, right? We're talking about social media now. We're talking about the influencers. Young kids aren't watching mainstream media. It's yeah, still, it's, it's even more lazy because you're young and it's even more lazy because you had the time mm-hmm. during the last year and a half to read and watch and you didn't. Well, well, think about it. When I get on social media, it's like, it's not because I'm lazy. It's because I'm procrastinating. What? <laughs> what? So, so here's the point I'm trying to make. You're like, this is what you, this is, I'm interpreting what you're saying. No, go ahead. Put words in my mouth. It's fine. No, let me try. Let me try. <laughs> I'm going to do my best and then just cut me off if I'm off. Basically, you're kind of saying... <clears throat> A big reason why Biden arguably has some support, right? Mm-hmm. We don't know where, but they supposedly, right? Is because the young generation is on social media heavily, and there are a lot of narratives and talking points and influencers that are pushing the Democrats are good, yeah, 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 mm-hmm. Republicans evil, you're a racist, like those stupid viral TikToks of if you vote for Donald Trump, then you are a white supremacist. Like, shut the fuck up. You, you, boy, you goofy as fuck if you still believe in that. You're a white supremacist if you voted for Trump. Like, <laughs> you literally living under a rock and you have not explored anything. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Kids aren't on social media because they're seeking out political information in a lazy manner. I would say kids are on social media because social media is hu- huge and because they're kids and everybody's on it. Grandmas, everybody. So they're already on there. Now, if you're the CCP and you happen to own the app, and Silicon Valley is all leftist, then it just becomes a product. It's like more of the same. In other words, you might have a soccer mom who, oh, I'm going to just pick on The View, even though I used to watch it. Like, oh, um, Rachel Maddow said that, or like, oh, Joy Reid on um, MSNBC, or oh, Don Lemon, he made a very excellent point. We don't realize that our opinions get assigned to us, whether it's Tucker Carlson or Don Lemon, mm-hmm. right? They're breaking it down for you. They're presenting it to you. And they're framing it in a way that's entertaining and gets you upset. So I just feel like all this stuff, I guess what we're both kind of trying to say, is all this shit is a product of our culture. It's a product of our society. Why do so many people trust uh Dr. Fauci over uh, Joe Rogan. Well, because one's a doctor and the other guy's a fucking MMA meathead jujitsu comedian who smokes marijuana, Rob. Of course. But it's like, I know. But one seems to have a lot more credibility. 
and why are they trying to silence one while propping up and covering up for the other one mm-hmm. who clearly was like doing some shady stuff he knew some shit didn't say some shit could have warned us about some shit it's saying flip flop and fauci so how the fuck do we unplug from uh <laughs> I'm, the only reason I'm not on TikTok is because I'm in TikTok jail right now. You know what you need to do? And I thought about this when you, you made those those gestures. You know that, that whatever that TikTok was, you need to have Lefty Larry do that with an eggplant. <laughs> <laughs> if you voted for it. <laughs> yeah. If you voted for Donald Trump, you are a white supremacist. <laughs> Please do that. That's a meme. <laughs> for sure. Animated GIF. <laughs> if you voted for... For Donald Trump, you're a white supremacist. <laughs> That's going to be the clip. That's it's got to be a clip, That's going to be the clip for this episode. Make it a clip. Oh, my God. Somebody clip it up. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. I, I mean, imagine being a kid that grows up with a fan. Let's just say you're in California. Sorry, California. But we got to pick on you because we're talking about you this episode. But any blue state, blue city, where your parent watches nothing but MSM, you know, mainstream media, nothing but The View, and then you're on TikTok indoctrinated by these rabbit holes of just basically the same thing They've, they're taking what is said on mainstream media they're giving it to the these influencers they're giving it to these tech platforms and they're just regurgitating the same thing and unless that young individual you know is taking it upon themselves to go out and read the actual like the shit that you know jen briney does reading the bills and reading the things that get passed and actually looking at the transcripts and maybe watching the c-span you know hearings and, and interviews you're just not gonna know right but it's not like it's not there it's, it's weird. I've never. I'm, I don't do that shit. I know, but we do. I, <laughs> I don't sit there and read no bill. But at the same time, we will. We'll get it, and we'll 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 actually cite what was said versus what just Don Lemon said or what just Hannity said. Plus, I, I guess the point I was trying to make is like, you know, it's a credibility thing. Like, obviously, it's unrealistic to have every every. Uh, average 13 year old is going to go whoever 18 20 30 year old is going to go read some bill like this is a 5,000 page thing that AOC it's on Pelosi's desk and this and that and this could affect your future and this could kill the oil industry and blah 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 blah. this the green new deal is it I don't know let's read it and it's like or some people might have a variety they might say you know what let me see what Crowder said or Alex Jones even I know Mm -hmm. that's a polarizing name but they might want to go see, like, what does Jack Posobiec think about? What does Scott Adams think about this? Mm-hmm. Has Steve Bannon talked about this? Rogan, even. Has Rogan had a guest about it? it? Does it fall under economics? Let me see what Peter Navarro said. Does it fall under, like, some uh, medicine stuff? Let me see what Weinstein or somebody. However, I feel like in society, a lot of us feel that pff, Alex Jones, bro, that's zero credibility. It's like, I know, but he's right sometimes. And you're absolutely, <laughs> dude, you're absolutely right. But what you just did, and I agree with, is that you would take these different personalities. You, you mentioned like 10. Mm-hmm. Listen to Rogan, Crowder, Posobiec, the list goes on. Yeah, and Scott pick, Adams. Pick from both sides too, right? Kyle Kalinske, David Pakman on this side, Lemon maybe, whatever. Uh, Glenn Greenwald. Glenn, yes, of course. You know, go to The Intercept, fucking go yeah. to Vox and Dar- Vice. Yeah, Darren Beatty. When you get through this list of, let's just say, a dozen of the people, you know, combined with the two sides, you've spent over a dozen hours listening to the commentary and people break down their opinions of it. Maybe us as well, right? Another podcast where they where they might bring in a guest that's a the motherfucker that invented the mRNA vaccine, right? And then you take that time that you that we invested in listening to this commentary. You could invest that time in reading about just the key points of the policies that we're talking about. Because here in the United States. Let's be real. There's about five or six key points that every fucking president runs on. The border, school choice, uh, taxes. Economy. Infrastructure is always a part of the deal. And let's just throw another one in there. Energy. Green New Deal type shit. Go green. You read the five things that every administration wants to pass. You just read it. It, there's, it's like this isn't 1994 and it's not hidden behind a, a cloak of you know magic where you can't get to yeah. it. It's there. What are we arguing about exactly? It's just people that can't agree. It's again, the common says it isn't so common on one side and the other side's trying to decipher it, but the other side doesn't want to hear it. And when you're under attack, they overwhelm you. So it's like, okay, do I read that after I brush up on the constitution? After I see what's up with, the, with these uh, jabs and this science and do the mass work? Like the parents, the parents, for example, some people can't wait to jab their kids up. 
You're right. Some people are like, no, my child will absolutely wear a freaking mask on the playground from the minute they leave this house in that car, at that school, in lunch, till they get back in the house, in my car, then they can take it off. And it's like, okay, you're not listening to any of the research. There's people in my family. There's people in my family where it's like, Oh, okay. Well, I guess they got to wear a mask at school all day in, in this at that grade level. Or and I like to ask, hey, 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 sis, what are they doing at your at your kid's school? And just hey, how your grand your grandbabies went back yet? You know, because to me, it's like, have y'all done the risk benefit analysis, or what are you basing it on? No, Who, nobody. It's has. almost like, well, what, okay, how'd you make your choice? Uh, oh, I'm anti. I don't want my kids to wear. It. Okay, cool. How'd you come to that decision? Or vice versa. You masking them up all day? Do you know what happens? At, how do they eat lunch? I'm like, all the are they separating them? Are they wearing ankle monitors? Washington. Washington. Uh, it was a student at Washington High School got to wear an ankle monitor. It was like at a school practice thing. We'll put it on the What Did He Said page on Instagram. But anyway, how are we coming up with these opinions? How are we arriving at these decisions? Did you read the, the newest Fauci whatever? Like. No. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, I, it's, I know it's like it's almost like it, it's very redundant a lot of the times with the the topics because again you go back to those top let's just say five right yeah you got people out here protesting X Y Z they're protesting go green versus oil they're protesting you know school choice but the taxes and the vouchers and this and that whatever it is if you just took out what the fucking policies are and you just talked to uh, an opposing view in your community like a neighbor or a friend or whatever and you just read it and you talked about it you're like what is it you don't agree with okay what is it you agree with what part of that can mm-hmm. we seem to to come to common ground with and then if it, there is just no common ground because the people like you said that are just going to go ahead and jab them from you know when they're six months old <laughs> versus i'm going to wait maybe six months to six years depending on what we find from these trials then there's just no agreeing and when you're under attack and you're overwhelmed there's division and disagreement in everything is i mean our vax passport's good you know should we lock down again i mean the comments and some of these like every time lena lena De ha- wasn't it linda <laughs> lena hidalgo lena hidalgo talking about we need to mask up we, Die! Need, we need to shut down everything Shh, comrades oh. close your business we cannot get to this point first she was saying there's not enough icu beds then she said Okay, there are enough ICU beds, not enough nurses because we had to fire them. So now we need $30 million to help recruit nurses from across the country. Which one is it, Lena? So people, I, I guess we're like talking in circles about this shit because I know I keep saying like, well, it's just, you know. Fuck it, it's, it's important. It's, it's overwhelming. But anyway, I'm not saying it. This is what I'm trying to say. Regardless whether it's laziness, lack of interest, politically illiterate, you just don't even want to know, ah, that shit don't affect me, dog. Okay, go pump gas. See, that shit ain't affecting you. Um, We about to be back at war. See if any of this, if you got family in the armed forces, see if this shit don't start affecting you. Um, Because of the pandemic, though, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. can't say, you almost can't say that anymore. You can't say it doesn't affect me. What aspect of what's going on right now doesn't affect somebody? Mm-hmm. unless you live in the mountains or you live you know like tim, shout out tim pool getting his you know fucking compound in the woods of whatever west virginia wherever he's at he said yesterday is like you know I, i'm to the point where i just don't care anymore because if i we're out here my team my production everything's out here let the cities burn if that's what they want mm-hmm. and then rebuild whatever's left yeah and then like for example critical theory and all this indoctrination they're doing in the schools where they're like like six-year-olds, the way they're starting to want to teach Thanksgiving to these little bitty five and six-year-olds, like they're turning it into, I mean, burn the white man at the stake. You mm-hmm. know, it went from, well, you know, they had some Jeremy blankets and, you know, it wasn't a, as peaceful as we thought. It went from that to just, I mean, they weaponizing 400-year-old history against these little brains. It make, it's just anti-American. And basically, we're divided on every front so many different topics even like is critical race theory good or bad just that alone Mm. people are like well uh, i heard the republicans don't want people to learn about uh slavery and it's because they're white and they're republican and they they want to erase the painful past and it's like no that's not what it means then can we can i tell you what it means and it's like no 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 where'd you get that from joe rogan ah you're crazy (laughs) q anon 
Like how many people I know, friends of mine that just dismiss me yeah. as facts don't work on this guy. If he ain't see it on Gab.com, he ain't going to believe it. Like what the fuck? Is, I don't, I'm not even on Gab. I'm not even on there. I'm not even on Gab. Or they'd be like, oh, this dude's QAnon and this and that. And it's like, y'all are the problem. People like that are part of the problem because motherfuckers just trying to be helpful and just trying to give a different variety of perspective. And it, it they, they want to just ruin your credibility and they want to poo-poo you. That's the word. Yep. They want to dismiss you. Just like, Don Lemon didn't say that. Get away from me, crazy wannabe white person. And it's like, bro, we're talking about freedom. We're talking about, are you pro gun? Do you want to have a gun in your house or not? Or we talking about masking these kids and the shit don't make sense. We talking about they want to force jab this and that and vax passports and segregation and, you know, limit your travel and Green New Deal is going to bankrupt the country. And it's like, no, white supremacy. It's like, wow, the white liberal really tricked y'all with that one. No, it's like a bro. It's like a pimp. It's like a pimp with a hoe and the hoe can never leave the pimp. Because the pimp just going to be like, man, you know that other pimp is a white supremacist. You really want to be over there with them Nazis? You want to be over there? Are you QAnon? F- Speaking of white and supremacy, are you familiar with the white pill term? What the fuck is that? Okay, so I'll give you the exact uh, Urban Dictionary because we never, use, we never use white pilling, but it is something we always talk about without knowing that we talk about it. So it's being aware of a difficult situation or position and having a fighting can-do attitude and not giving up, plus accomplishing said things within the difficult situation. So being optimistic, not merely through gut feelings, but via having thought about a situation enough to understand how to get through it successfully. So it's like a, it's a very, it's a, it's an overabundance of optimism, right? Despite how, you know, the situation might be. So I think white pilling, I think that's what I do a lot, kind of knowingly and unknowingly when when it comes to a lot of things we talk about, because you have to you have to approach it from an optimistic situation, right? Like I know it seems like the greatest country, the baddest bitch to ever exist, seems like it's going down in flames. In some parts, it is, but if you don't have an a, just an unrealistic optimism about what can happen and transpire quickly, like that's why I brought up California at the top of the podcast. It's like if we if we watch what's happening in this dark blue, you know, part of the world or the country, yeah, the world, uh, if we watch it turn on its head. We know anything is possible. We see Cuomo come out of New York, you know, and actually get uh, indicted from his somebody within his cabinet or his side or whatever. Anything is possible. You know what I'm saying? Well, I think that's just to get him out of the way from when Kamala wants to run. She don't got to be up against Cuomo. But California, um, you said it's dark blue. And here, here's a variable, though, bro. They still got the mail-in ballots. Yeah, yesterday somebody was arrested with 300 ballots, drugs, and a gun. And then we were just in Cali, and you're watching the the commercials in the local news or whatever, and the commercial was like, stop, you know, text, blah, 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 to Newsom, whatever. Stop the Republican uh, recall. They're framing it as a Republican hit job. Basically, like, Newsom's doing a good job. Déjalo, está malito, pobrecito. And it's these racist white Republicans named Larry Elder (laughs) that... um, want to come over here and talk down on Newsom, even though he's doing a fantastic bang-up job. It's like, they just play dirty, bro. They play dirty, and who suffers? The working class, the middle class, the small shop owner, the, per- the grandma that just wants to go to church, the, you know what I mean? The dude that just want to pump some gas at a normal fucking price, the young couple that just wants to be able to buy a house, get some equity, you know what I mean? Pass it on to their kids. Uh, no, pinche this madre. But fuck it, keep voting blue, and uh, you know, uh, keep paying your taxes. Look, man, I I refuse to believe, and I'll end my my side of today's podcast with this. I refuse to believe that there are that many more stupid ideas that are being propped up in the United States versus better than those stupid ideas that are not being propped up propped up in the United States. To where this trend of constant stupidity just just happens year after year. We're in twenty twenty one. I'm not going to believe that by 2024, whatever happens between now and then is going to keep enough people on that side of history. I just don't believe it. There's no way. When is Newsom's term up? Not the recall, but like when is it actually in? It would have been up, I believe, in 2022. 2022. Okay. So either way, he just might be out a year early or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. Um. No, I think uh, I think the tides are turning. I mean, I think it's good to be optimistic. Um, information's getting out. Mm-hmm. They haven't censored everybody. Um, a lot of people are peeping game. 
there are a lot of conservatives on TikTok, just like you got the Lefty Larrys on there. Uh, you got Red Pill Tamales spreading the word. You know what I'm saying? People coming out to the shows in droves like, hey, RPT. I met a lot of young Latinos out there that are like, hey, man, thanks for doing what you do. We got to wake motherfuckers up. Uh, not everybody's a Lefty Larry. And probably. I got to applaud you again, man, for doing this. I mean, I, I never thought we'd, we'd be doing this for as long as we've been doing it when I first... I didn't think we'd be doing it at all, honestly. I thought you would have just wanted to keep tweeting and talking about it subtly and, and just seeing what kind of transpired but when it really it really caught some gas or it took on gas and exploded you just said no you basically you were boosie before boosie you know what i'm talking about hey we cut from the same cloth me pimp c and little boosie but anyway um we're gonna keep an eye on the california situation um i think ideology wise the tides are turning people are they're starting to wake up they're starting to get hip to some of this shit like i don't know man my prima sent me a whatsapp yeah, <laughs> you know my prima from Texas sent me some juicy links, yep. and they started. Next thing you know, they bumping some Candace Owens or some Officer Tatum or some somebody. So we shall see. However, elections are what they are. You know, we shall see. Yeah. I don't know. A lot of people are very brainwashed. They want you politically illiterate. They want you financially illiterate. They want you to keep going along with the get along, and and sh- you know doing the. The Jesse Jackson, Reverend R. Sharpton, the the Latino, you know, the, hey, raza, vote blue, homie, porque despacito. And it's just like, screw your freedom, dog. That's just what's up. And it's like, no, no, no. Walk it back. i also say this. Uh, Mike Lindell was on Steve Bannon's yesterday. Did mm-hmm. you listen to it? I believe so, yes. Okay. I, I got to get some of this concrete detail out. I got to get something from him out and in into national news headlines into something so that we can completely d- discover it and uncover it all or we got to put a pin in it oh you're saying you need him to come out with some some more meat of the evidence i need the meat i need the pu- puro pinche brisket the whole uh-huh. thing i need the hundred dollar brisket that we're paying these days because meat's so goddamn expensive yeah. uh-huh. so that we can actually so you want like a smoking gun red hand like <laughs> like a photo of a dude literally <laughs> dude well doing- we've seen that already we've seen that but, you know, these Dominion machines, you know, these... these. Well, the problem is this, Rob. Here's the problem. They say the Arizona audits are going to have some bombshell news right in a week. We're hoping. Well, now there's delays today because people got COVID within that Cyber Ninjas. Uh, mm. Okay. Well, they, they just keep saying, they're like, look, we want the shit to be airtight. Mm-hmm. But here's the biggest variable, I believe. I don't know how much it spills over into the Mike Lindell situation. But here's the thing, bro. The way Dominion, Dominion is playing... You know, yeah, they're suing people. They want to counterattack that way. Um, there's subpoenas mm-hmm. where they're requesting some information. There's like some router info. There's some files. There's some access. There's some passwords motherfuckers need. And you're trying to do a complete forensic audit, but they're not giving you complete access. Mm-hmm. So you're doing your best. Show like, man, look at ain't this? Look at this shit. Look at this coincidence. Oh, how the fuck these numbers don't add up? Yeah, this has never happened. How you win this county, but you don't win this county? And it used to be when you win this county, that's who dictates who really wins the the whole election. It's all it's a, a bellwether and this and that and all these anomalies. Like this is mathematically not impossible. And there's multiple states mm-hmm. ringing the alarm, but it it's just a matter of how they allegedly cheated to where it's like well they you know that uh, you got an ip address but you don't got this and well they covered their tracks with this and yeah this was it's like compartmentalized cheating yes it's like we cheating from all angles <clears throat> different ways and that way it's harder to get caught and you just sitting there like yeah. it's almost like um like if i had ice cream right here right now and i walk out and i walk back in but my ice cream's knocked on the floor rob has some ice cream on his beard <laughs> And the cameras suddenly just shut off for like 10 <laughs> seconds and you heard some scuffling. And I'm like, bro, listen to the audio that you literally hear Rob say, mmm, chocolate. Oh, sh- fuck. And you hear the door open. He tripped over the camera and then you hear when he presses the button again. And it's like, I know, but <laughs> I haven't seen Rob do it. It's like, bro, who else? I walked out. We're still hooving, huh? Where's Leslie Larry at, huh? Well, they didn't let them be observers, right? Because oh. they, they, COVID, they're like, y'all got to watch if he hit the ice cream or not from way back there. How convenient. Yeah. I mean, he was talking about Colorado. He had some really interesting things to say about Colorado and their secretary of state and how you could actually, if you voted there, if you're listening from, from there, according to some 
law there, voters can hit up their registrar or somebody at their state department, ask for a copy of the dumb onion machines from the day oh, that they yeah, voted. Yeah. yeah, he says there's a um there's like a um a right that the citizens have mm-hmm. in Colorado. Well they'll give you an image. Yeah. And is it just of your vote? Uh, no, it's of the entire he was trying to explain it, but he got on a tangent that I even even uh, Steve Bannon was like, wait, 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 start it over, say it yeah. over. <laughs> yeah, dude, he said he does yeah. it so much. Hey, hey, my mic, you got it. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, so all I gathered from it was that he was saying that they're they're changing allegedly changing some things up, right? So if everybody goes and requests these, let's call them schematics of the voters or whatever. It'll be a, a screenshot of, of that information, and if it ever changes, then we know that some fuckery was afoot. So anyway. yeah, they're having to find every loophole. Like, okay, we can gather more data if we do if every if we can get some citizens to do this. If you yeah. know somebody over there, it's has- almost like a Freedom of Information Act kind of thing for Colorado based on yeah. your votes. I don't know, man. I just I really want to get down to the bottom of something. Like somebody needs to be pinned for something when it comes mm-hmm. to these dumb onion machines. And, and it's important to also know the variables of what they're up against in case you're talking to friends and family and they try to dismiss you or ha 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 member what's up with your pillow guy didn't find anything huh and you just got to explain to them look the cyber ninjas they want to make sure that their info is a one mm-hmm. number two they don't even have complete access number three there were subpoenas because for the longest weren't people dismissing people saying yeah but they keep getting thrown out of court yeah. no judge will look at it yeah Come on, let's move on, America. No judge has looked. And it's like, over technicalities, they didn't want to be the arbiter of our elections. They yeah. chose to stay out of it. So no why and what, instead of just like, come on, there's nothing there. Our like cleanest, clearest. And it's like, it doesn't matter how many documentaries came out, like even produced by the left, where they're trying to warn us how vulnerable these machines were. It doesn't matter what a hacker could tell you. It doesn't yeah. matter that Kamala Harris herself said, we sat in a room and we did a demo and they hacked it from a cell phone in five minutes. Even Chief Justice Clarence Thomas, who I think, you know, out of all the people, all the justices would be the guy who would want to see Biden, you know, lit oh, yeah. up for uh-huh. some shit uh-huh. that they catch him or or his cabinet do, right? Uh-huh simply kind of said that we don't we can't possibly erode more of the confidence in these elections without having the actual information that we need to follow through with any of these cases mm-hmm. so they just need time rob i get it I, I give arizona at least like two more weeks and then mike lindell he said over the weekend him and his team they were figuring out a way to solidify because this man did made about five documentaries he had a whole symposium a 72 hour live stream i mean just a treasure trove of numbers and data and yeah. screenshots and this and that. He and that's what Steve Bannon told me. He's like, I need you to turn this all into like the case. Yeah, you yeah. know. So we shall see. Because you know. when it comes to 2024 or whatever next, maybe the gubernatorial races or whatever. You know, people talk about how do we fix this? People not having confidence in it, right? Is it more people present? Is it like we have to have a system in place next time instead of having one person? overlooking it maybe we have two or three people overlooking the people that are counting these votes like you can't rely on i think it's we got to go backwards in the sense we can't rely on tech for this shit anymore yeah Uh, i forget who does like strictly paper ballots but we shall see yeah anyway uh, we talked about a lot today yes sir yes sir we covered a lot you guys got an extra treat we did an hour and a half for the public episode for sure so yeah that was episode episode number 82 i head out to denver this weekend spread the word colorado i will be there Puro pinche Denver. Oh, hey, so you're out of town. We we're going to do the, the live TIA Zoom, right, podcast at the end of, on the Thursday again, but you're going to be heading out of town Friday. So maybe we'll talk about it. And if need be, we might do it on the first week of September for our TIA. Mm-hmm. You know, just something new and fun that we're doing, uh, you know, people that are supporting. The live Zoom. Yeah, live and, Zoom. And the homie Luis from the TIA, he's going to scoop me up from Denver. Oh, word? Yes, sir. Cool. So, all right, you guys be safe, man. Take care of each other. Sass.